The Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in the United States and home to more than 2,700 species of plants and animals. At Constellation, headquartered in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, we pride ourselves on a strong history of stewardship of the Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, deep, deeply rooted in Constellation's culture is a heavy involvement in the communities where we work and live. And we're very proud of our financial commitment to many leading organizations that are involved in cleaning up the Chesapeake Bay. To us, it's very, very important to our participation in the local community. So the Chesapeake Bay Trust is the premier grant-making organization, the premier partner for projects and getting things done on the ground. Really our mission is to uh, engage citizens across the watershed, really getting people to understand what the issues with the watershed and the Chesapeake Bay are. A watershed is the area of land, a common area of land that drains to a common body of water. Um, so in the Chesapeake Bay, it's an area of land that's 64,000 square miles. Uh, it stretches all the way up to Cooperstown, New York, where the Baseball Hall of Fame is. It encompasses six states and D.C., so that's Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New York. When it rains, the water will pick up any pollution, i.e. oil or um, trash. In most communities, it would move it from your driveway to a drain, which then leads to a stream or a pond. All the way into rivers, like the Susquehanna, say if you're in New York, and that'll feed all the way down to the Chesapeake Bay, It'll come over the Conowingo Dam and, and end up in the bay. So by painting the storm drains, we're drawing attention to the actual drains and the fact that if you're littering around the drain or even anywhere within the watershed that that drain is contained, every time it rains, that means all of that trash and pollution will eventually get to the bay. And we're heading towards summertime. That blacktop is really, really hot and the impervious surfaces will heat up the water. That water is going to heat up the water in the Chesapeake Bay. And since the bay is only 21 feet on average, that means that those temperature fluctuations happen very quickly and frequently. That creates lots of problems for fish and other things that are living in the bay. It creates dead zones. A dead zone is an area in the Chesapeake Bay where the dissolved oxygen content is too low for any bay organisms to survive there. All of the excess fertilizer and nutrients that run off the land during rain events into the water they fuel huge algal blooms, and the more algae that blooms, the more algae that there is that dies in the summer, and it falls to the bottom of the bay, and there's bacteria that break down the dead algae, and the bacteria consumes oxygen when it breaks down the algae. So the more algae there is, the less dissolved oxygen there is. We in the Chesapeake Bay community as a whole have coalesced around this goal of really trying to quantify what we're going to do to bring back the bay by 2025, to bring it back to a, a, a baseline, a level that, um, that we can swim, we can fish, we can recreate. It's still an economic engine for the community and we think we can get there. We've always been a supporter of Chesapeake Bay Trust, but in a special way, um, we've become more and more involved over the last few years because we actually fund some of the Chesapeake Bay uh, Conservation Corps volunteers. I saw the Chesapeake Conservation Corps as a real opportunity to learn even more about what's in my backyard. I love learning things that you know I don't see every day and kind of pulling back the curtain and taking a deeper look. We're growing the future leaders of the environmental movement so these are going to be competent leaders. They're young environmental stewards, they have passion, they love what they're doing and there are things that they can teach us. By connecting young people to the bay, you're making them into stewards of the environment and getting the next generation to view this as a prime responsibility, but something that they do every day, not just sort of periodically, um, is a huge advantage. It's important for the community to get involved in protecting the bay because it takes a community effort. So how can you help? Start around your home or workplace. Rain barrels help reduce runoff and conserve water. Plant trees. Their roots act as a filter for harmful nutrients that would otherwise find their way into the bay. Managing and conserving your energy usage through sustainable solutions can help to both lower costs and protect the environment. Um, in Maryland, um, one thing that we always tell uh, folks, uh, people can buy a bay plate. $20 bay plate can get a kid out on a field trip that will change his or her life forever. At Constellation, we help customers develop comprehensive strategies to improve energy efficiency and also identify renewable energy sources to power their energy needs. Saving energy and renewable solutions can help to improve conditions throughout the Bay Watershed. 
Constellation also recently joined the Exelon family of companies, which operates one of the cleanest generating fleets in the industry. Exelon proudly serves 6.6 million customers throughout 47 states and three metropolitan utilities, Baltimore Gas and Electric, Pico in Philadelphia, and Comet in Illinois. The Exelon family of companies is committed to a low-carbon future with an industry-leading plan to abate our carbon footprint and continue to be a leading provider of reliable, clean energy. Every time someone buys clean energy, they choose to have a positive impact on the bay. Regardless of who you buy electricity from, whether Constellation or somebody else, it makes a difference in the environment and it makes a difference to the bay. Choose to be a partner in the Chesapeake Bay cleanup every day.